What glamorized career path is actually a complete nightmare? Ballet dancer. Parents spend tens of thousands, or more, on training. They give up their entire teen years and schooling. Most elite ballet dancers are homeschooled and a large percentage move away from home for training in high school. Most dancers you see on stage in a ballet are paying to be there. The bottom rungs of ballet companies are pay to play. Then when you have paid to dance a few years you might be able to get a position that pays you with a dozen pairs of point shoes and a stipend for performances. Then maybe you'll be promoted to the bottom level where you get paid 20k a year and have no health insurance. All while putting your body through major torture. Chef. Long hours, shitty environment, nothing is ever good enough. Been in the business for 12 years. In the US, 8 hour days and paid overtime. In UK, I'm working 60 hour weeks, 13 hour days, on salary with no overtime. My personal life has taken a nosedive and so has my health. The only time I have to go to the gym, a hobby I loved, is after midnight after working all day. I don't get scheduled breaks, and if I get a chance to eat, I'm shoving fries into my mouth. For those who are interested in becoming a chef, it is not for the faint-hearted. Have a backup plan or some other marketable skills so you're not up a creek if this industry does take its toll. Radio announcer. Like a lot of other jobs in the entertainment industry, it's full-time work for part-time pay. Second jobs are common. Your pizza delivery guy just may be your favorite morning show host. At least, that's how the morning guy at my station made ends meet, until he was laid off in the last round of cutbacks. Veterinarian. Insanely competitive schooling that crippled you with debt, with a depressing debt income ratio after graduation. Most of your patients don't like you, and most of the owners think you're getting rich up selling them unnecessary services when their dog's exploding eyeball cancer can be cured with raw organic exotic meats slash CBD slash coconut oil, but you're withholding that information. High stress, stagnant wages, long hours, shit holiday leave. Rampant depression. Lost count of how many colleagues have committed suicide. Sometimes tempted to join them. I don't know if nightmare is the word, but my wife has finally reached her lifelong goal of becoming a zookeeper at one of the top zoos in the US. She is very happy to have the opportunity to hand food to otters, have reindeer eat out of her hand, and brush okapi. However, she took on tens of thousands of dollars in student loans and did months of unpaid work at the zoo to get the job, which is seasonal, requiring she be off two months a year. She gets up at 4 a.m. and does farmhand-style physical labor for 8 hours a day for about $9 an hour with no benefits. I am thrilled that she reached her goal, and I am happy that she is happy, but I am pretty disenfranchised with the whole thing. Film crew. Yes, you sometimes meet famous people. Sometimes they're cool, often they're really not. The days are 14 plus hours of work with a commute of who knows how long on either end, depending where you're shooting. You have half an hour for lunch. Coffee breaks are whenever you're not needed on set, so depending on your job, I was in camera, and we rarely had a down moment, it could be almost never. More often than not, someone on set is yelling. People lose their minds over making really shitty entertainment. You start work by 7 a.m. on Monday, and by Friday you're coming in at 4 p.m. and leaving when the sun comes up on Saturday. There are no paid holidays, no paid sick days, no paid vacation. If you don't work enough qualifying hours, the union kicks your health care enough. Flight attendant. The travel would be amazing, but let's face it. You're a glorified waitress working in a cramped, aluminium tube and after long hours, all the insane jet lag will duck up your body beyond imagination. The worst part? In other customer service jobs, the problem customers eventually leave, either of their own volition or by being so over the top they get kicked out. Flight attendants are stuck with the jerks. Farming on a large scale. I was living in debt up to my ass, $500k$1 mil depending on the time of year, haggling for every input, land, fertilizer, seed, equipment, at the mercy of the weather, and got to watch the commodity markets kick me in the nuts every business day. The real cherry on top was everyone thinking you were trying to kill them with GMOs and copious amounts of chemicals that we don't use. Not to mention farms are passed down through generations so you've got a bunch of dead and living ancestors watching your every move. Oh and a lot of farmers work a second full-time job for the health insurance. There's a reason farm suicides are high and farm accidents and accidents are higher. 
I'm a professional, full-time voice actor. I'm blessed to be successful and happy, but about 99% of the voice actors I know are depressed most of the time, struggling hard to find work, wrestling with imposter syndrome, questioning if they should give up, and barely able to make rent. Particularly video game slash anime slash animation actors. The video game industry. A lot of kids and teens wanted it so bad because I grew up playing games blah 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 they take me to another world blah blah blah. Then you become an adult and learn that it's all math and physics, and making a video game has nothing to do with what you experienced growing up. It's all black screens of code, polygons, and being criticized for your work. What's worse, if you make games you probably never have the time to play them anymore. The gaming industry is notorious for implementing 60 to 80 hour work weeks. Even worse depending on what company you work for, you may never have stable work. You finish a project and then the company tells you we don't have another project for your particular skill set. Then you gotta look for more work. And if all that wasn't bad enough, you'll probably never work on a game you want to work on. All those big, fancy games and indie darling on Steam are a very small fraction of what exists. Barbie's Horse Adventure? Those people got degrees and we're inspired by the same games as you. Crappy Candy Crush knockoffs? Same degree and inspiration. Stupid tabletop games that you only see in the family section at Walmart? Those also utilize game designers slash programmers. Don't get into video games because you like video games. Get into video games because you're passionate about math and science. Architect is really bad. Most people don't complete it and the mental health issues are quite serious. There's a lot of criticism and stress in the beginning, lots of late nights and hard work. At the end of the work you get insulted in public. There's no real reason for this. You aren't going to be saving lives or anything, there's no need to make it so expensive either. So three years later, you get a degree and have to do a year of intern work, then it's time for another year of study and projects and exams. Then two years of minimum wage work. Then you come back for more exams, essays and projects. It's really too hard for what it is. I get paid very badly and I don't really use any of my training. It was pointless really but girls like it at parties when I say I'm an architect. That's a lie I don't go to parties I have no social life. For all of you smart kids with advanced degree of from top 50 colleges, don't go into consulting. You can do better. Find a line of work that is not as soul sucking, and energy draining. Those frequent flyer miles and free hotels, whining and dining in glamorous suits or just a smokescreen, to cover up the misery from constant traveling, Networking, guaranteed overtime and no weekends are not worth it. Many people do it as a stepping stone to a real career, which is smart. Staying in consultancy for 5 plus years will likely turn your life upside down. Investment banking. People talk about the fancy plane rides, expensive dinners, wild parties with your colleagues or a client. The reality of it is you're never truly off work, always on call like a surgeon. Works weeks are usually 60 to 100 hours and can be brutal if one follows another. It's really more like working from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. in office and then get home to work another bit and have any given presentation ready stat. I've gone all-nighters followed by client meetings where all I have time for is a quick shower and a 7-Eleven coffee. Teaching for sure. I mean, people know it sucks. But still the idea of becoming a teacher and changing the lives of children simply by caring enough exists in a lot of people and sadly it's just not like that. The very sad truth is it doesn't matter how much you care, there are so many people who just want to make your job near impossible and people drop out of the position left and right. Law enforcement. I went into it with the naive belief I would be making a difference. I wanted to protect people and make my community safer. Instead. I got to see the worst humanity has to offer day in and day out. Let's see if I can list all the negatives, most departments are filled with arrogant assholes with inflated egos that love to condescend to other officers or the public when they themselves can barely read. Many officers have severe anger issues and love to take it out on the public, never saw it happen physically but verbally or by issuing every ticket possible. Try to suggest changes to bring about better relations with the public? Prepare to be ostracized and bullied till you toe the line. The overall level of incompetence is staggering, with some officers barely knowledgeable of the firearms they carry every day. Your view of the public and people in general becomes very dark. The amount of EDPs, emotionally disturbed persons, druggies and alcoholics you deal with each day is ridiculous and you start to wonder how society hasn't collapsed. 
you arrest a violent offender just to see them quickly released over and over. What's worse is how many times an abuse victim files a complaint because you arrested their love despite almost being killed. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.